and sister. Please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful day. Holy Spirit, please take, make this teaching extremely simple and easy to understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have given us your instruction in the Bible, and by your grace, help us to apply them in our lives so that we get the results. Holy Spirit, Lord, please take full control of this session and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our Father, I make this prayer in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So I'm going to talk on contentment. Uh, can anyone tell me, according to Bible, what is the meaning of contentment? To be content. Satisfaction. Who's that, Joyce? Yes. You get 100 more, 10 on 10. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, well, according Holy to Spirit. It means to be satisfied or please, discontentment will result when turning from God, lying and hiding sin. Now, contentment is a virtue, right? It is a supreme virtue. Now, a godly contentment does not come by adding to what you have, but subtracting from what you desire. We may have many desires. I don't say it's wrong to have desires. The world says that you will find contentment when your possession rise to meet the level of your desires. That is how the world thinks. Now, the Christian has another way of contentment. That is, he can bring desires down to his possessions. That is it right? Right? Thank God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Now, spiritual contentment. Contentment is the result of spiritual awareness which allows you to recognize negativity. It changes your pattern of thinking. As you tap your huge inner potential, all desires are fulfilled by you, regain your place. Hope I is understood about uh, what is spiritual con contentment. It allows you to recognize negativity in the first place. And secondly, it makes you change the pattern of your thinking. That is, whatever you have in desires, you are fulfilled to you uh, regaining your place. That is, you come back to your senses, in other words. Now, do you live a life of contentment? How do we live it? This is very interesting now. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 12. Brother, please put the slide, Brother Max. 1 Timothy 6. Can anyone read, please? It's so small. But oh. godliness with contentment is great gain. For we bought, brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and, and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Still more, Sister Marcella? Till 12, read till 12, please. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some Coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. They hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good 
profession for many witnesses. That is what now is so clear, is uh, very well said that we must not amass wealth. That is the whole gist of it, that wealth is evil as it said, because it brings us into many temptations and we can't take it with us. Can we take any wealth? I've seen uh, millionaires who have died and some have gone without taking up even a shirt on their back, right? Now, what is the secret of contentment in the Bible? Let me tell you, it's all written in Philippians 4, 11 to 13. The next slide, please. Yes. Anyone? Can we? Michelle, continue. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore, to be therewith to be content. I know both how to be abused a base and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things to Christ which strengthen me praise God this is uh, how Philippians says St. Paul tells us now it is what I know what to have little and I know what is to have plenty in any and all circumstances, I have learned the secrets of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. This is exactly how St. Paul is talking about biblical way of having secret of having contentment. Um, now, let me ask you, uh, is there attribute to this contentment? Yes. There are five attributes to this contentment. Now, can anyone give any one attribute of this contentment? You know, like how uh, Sister Mel Melanie has explained to us about the fruit, and it has nine attributes, love, joy, peace, patience, all that. So now contentment itself is another uh, virtue with attributes. Now, the five attributes, what are the five? Any five? Can anyone mention, please? Being rooted in the word of God. Uh, okay, that's uh, good. And let, let me make the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But uh, satisfaction. Oh, you hit it on the nail. <laughs> you you get also another ten and ten. And I think you should treat yourself with chocolate and. Mm, you have to you have to give the chocolate system, Asela. <laughs> Treat yourself. Okay. Let me go to satisfaction. The first attribute. This means the good feeling a person experiences when he achieves something based on merit and according to his expectation. A satisfied person is never envious. He's not jealous or greedy about material things. He's happy, unmoved, calm, and enjoys internal peace of mind. Such a beautiful explanation on satisfaction. We can be satisfied and contented. Here are a few scriptures. Uh, brother, you'll have to put up the scriptures. Psalm 16, verses 11. Yes, yes, sister. The third slide, please. Just give me a sec, sister, please. Definitely, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Psalm 16. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Now, these are some of the psalms that support uh, satisfaction, how I say. Uh, it is Psalm 16, verses 11. Isaiah 58 verses 11, Psalm 17 verses 15, Psalm 37 verses 4, Hebrews 13, chapter 13 verses 5, 1 Timothy 6 verses 6, Matthew 6, 33, Romans 15, 13, 13, Philippians 4 verses 9, Jeremiah 31 verses 25. Matthew 5, verses 6, John 4, verses 14, Psalms 90, verses 14. And we still continue, Philippians 4. Let me 
11 to 12. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 4, 11 to 12. It's not that I see. That's the one, sister. Yes. Praise God. Then the next one will come. Follow. Not that I yeah. speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be based and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. Uh, now, this also speaks of how we can be satisfied. It's just talking very clearly. Now, we see in Psalms 103, verses 1 to 5. Yeah, this is uh, my favorite, which I say it loud. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. When we are satisfied, this is, this is what comes out of our hearts. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. When we are so satisfied, we are so young in heart, young in spirit, we can raise up like eagles, no longer live on this ground level. We can we keep soaring because our heart is lightened with gratitude, with contentment. Now, the second attribute is lack of envy. We do not envy. We do not have envy. That is the second attribute. The first one I said is satisfaction. It is the state where one grows beyond petty jealousy and the inordinate desire to have something which somebody else has. A person who is content with what he has would not want to be living someone else's life. A content individual should not be involved in any social behavior. Now, here, uh, I would say, you know, I, I'll give you one small example. Like uh, my daughter, she was requested to stand for some you know, went elections, small, small during this time. But I asked you to refrain from, from it because it's not uh, spiritually, she will not grow spiritually. And I made her understand how it is that she's already doing a good job of looking after aged parents, in-laws, father-in-law, mother-in-law. She's got daughters, she's taking them to school, bringing them, taking up their lessons. She's occupied, her husband is uh, sailing, he's not at the moment, around and I said, you'll be just diverting your godly calling or whatever, you're doing a good job. You will fall into some, you know, uh, in the worldly carnal minded you'll be. So she understood and she refrained from, uh, she just requested that she won't be there because this takes you away from, that is taking you away from God. It's taking, pulling you away from the truth. So here there are some scriptures that also speaks on lack of envy. Brother, the next slide, please. Praise Jesus. Proverbs 23. Yes, Proverbs 23, verses 17 to 18. Galatians 5, verses 6. James 3, verses 14 and 16. Romans 1, verses 29. 1 Peter 2, 1. Now, what is... This is, uh, everybody knows about the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is always patience. Love is always kind. Love is never envious or arrogant with pride. Nor is she conceited. Is never proud. This is exactly what, uh, this is the virtue that we all have it in us in some measure. So we will not, we will not have that lack of envy. We will not envy anyone if, when we have this scripture, especially one put it in 13, when we put ourselves in that, I am always patient. I'm always kind. I'm never envious or arrogant with pride, nor am I conceited. When we say this, it's we, we, we elevate ourselves. We come up to, to the level higher than 
you can imagine. Now let me come to the third attribute, humility. Humility is a special attribute of contentment. It is the loneliness of the mind. A humble person is always meek in spirit, respectful, modest, and obedient. And now we all humble, of course, because we are obedient to the word of God. That is the first thing I thought of when humility, when I came across, in which way, yes, we never say no to our God, because we, we can never ever be ungrateful for what we are today, who we are, and we have we are serving the living God, we are serving the most high God. So we always have to be humble, not only abiding his quality, Jesus himself was so humble, and he has washed the feet of the apostles. He is humbled himself to be so obedient to his father. That is the biggest that we can learn the quality of being humble. He was obedient till the death. He went to the cross and not for, for anything. Of, he could have just said, no, I cannot do it. But he did it. He did it to save us, given us the salvation. He went to such hum humbleness, humility, that, you know, he didn't look. What's, he went to stark naked but he didn't care because just to conquer the evil conquer death conquer because the devil is sprawling in this world and we have to be very very careful we have to be very he's very subtle even at any point of time even when you're listening now he'll trigger he'll bring some thoughts but no the lord takes charge because we are his children so we, amen Amen to that. Thank you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. So this is where we understand when we say humbleness is not uh, being uh, totally, you know, doing, okay, somebody tells you do this and do that. But when uh, submitting to something wrong, that is not humble. You can stand and say, no, that's not right. Amen. Brother, put up the scriptures, please. James 10, 410. Uh, scriptures for this is... James 4, verses 10. Mika. That one, sister? This one, this one. 6, verses 8. 2 Chronicles. Sorry. Just. Yes, sorry. 2 Chronicles 7, verses 14. James chapter 4, verses 6. Luke chapter 14, verses 11. Proverbs 22, verses 4. Proverbs 11, verses 2. Ephesians 2, verses 2, Ephesians 4, sorry, verses 2, Psalms 25, verses 2, 2 Corinthians 9, 12, verse 9 to 10, Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. These are the scriptures to support the attribute for lack of envy. Now, the fourth attribute would be discipline. Did anyone guess that fourth attribute is discipline? Well, this is a training of the mind. When we are disciplined, we train our mind and our character in order to have self-control. Unless we train our mind and our character be right, we will not have any self-control in any area, in our speaking, in our behavior. It is the reality of controlling behavior. It is a good factor for contentment. He or she restrains himself or herself from wrongdoing. And I will give you one example. You know, this is a very old example. When I was working, I, I remember that uh, uh, we were asked to join a union in the office. I was the only one who didn't join the union because I know that the management is giving us our salary. The management is doing the much for us. It is just that greed, some staff had come up with some lower staff and they wanted to have a union. Even uh, higher officers were supporting the union, but I was the only one, only one. Even the officers said, what is that thing? But I, I didn't disclose it to them that I didn't want to join the union because I remember when my brother joined the union, they were all, taken uh, they were for one day in the prison but, uh, and my dad had to release but my brother did not come out he said no I want all the boys to come out along with me so my daddy 
he, he, he was in the Minister of Defense, so he had uh, support and all the boys out. And I had that experience and I was very young. I was still in college and not joined work. And that always was in my mind, not to support a union, but be with the management. And the management was so, you know, I, I know how the management felt after that. And, and secondly, is I want to say is that um, uh, I uh, disciplined myself so much that any wrong action of anyone, no, I wouldn't say it to them because uh, it was difficult for me to communicate to them in the language. So my eyes was enough. And uh, they would understand that, you know, it's not my cup of tea. So they were refrained. They would not talk in front of me, whatever, or behave. So that is how I could, I remember, because my dad was very strict. He had disciplined us in such a way. And I want to mention here, I just remembered, Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Why I am so contented right from beginning, from childhood, I can say right from. Praise God. Praise God, sister, praise God. Praise God. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. we can. You're back, sister. Yes, continue. Yeah, that came, I didn't take it. So I was saying we were, he was, a, he, we were six siblings and we had winter school uniform and we were in a Cambridge school and the fees are very high. But I was wondering now as how my dad did it. My mother was only a housewife, but he was never, never did I hear him complaining or grumbling. And then uh, even two of my brothers were in the boarding school. I just don't know. But I know for one thing that we were never complaining, asking for things. We were contented. Even till date, I am contented. And I, I just don't know. My children are also blessed. They are blessed. They are contented. This contentment. One, then I gave the teaching on favors. This topic came up immediately. It just uh, triggered me. And yes, I, the favor of God is, and I'm, I'm contented also. So I said, let me take up this topic on contentment. And this discipline and all that, and this, I'm satisfied with all that I have, that it doesn't trouble me at all. That anything anybody has more, because I'll tell you honestly, I'm given a very small, not more than 500 square meters of property. And the others have got 4,000, 5,000. But am I, no, I'm not bickering. I'm not, because one thing is me, I cannot take it. And secondly, I cannot ma maintain it. So it's best be happy because ultimately my mansion is there up in heaven. <laughs> Amen. I'm Praise God. happy about my mansion. <laughs> Praise That's God. Praise God. God. Praise God. Nothing more than that. This um, I will not take. I'm I'm aiming for my mansion. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, the you, first, Jesus. Uh, attribute is extreme hatred of greed and corruption imagine the attribute that you have this is the absence of a strong desire for more wealth a content person has no strong desire to acquire more wealth it is the spirit of greed that leads to corruption and other social vices a content person refrains from envy and action that leads to selfishness now let me just give one small example here I had uh, difficulties with the government, like passing my file or whatever. But I tell you, by God's grace, God has really blessed me. I never till today bribed anyone. I just spoke and I got my things done. And now that I've come into the world, I feel they're more obliging to me than I could request them for anything. I, I just get things on the platter. And so, so much so, I take the cake, like in my office, I, when we joined, I was senior most, and then they had to give promotion to others. Every time they had to promote me to give promotion to the lower one. So I was taking the cake and eating it, I could say. At least eight promotion in my span of 33 years. Thank God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That is where now I'm reflecting to all the beautiful days that I had, lovely days. And yes, days are such much better for me now being in the world. It's joyful, rejoicing now. Now, how do we practice contentment? Here are some tips for cultivating contentment. Now, these tips really help, should help us all. 
First is to pause. Pause. When you find yourself unhappy with someone or something, just pause. Just remain silent. Take a deep breath and remind yourself to accept that person as they are and to embrace their good qualities or to look on the bright side of any situation. So we, we react or respond immediately. No, we just have to pause. That is what I'm also learning. Second is stop buying stuff you don't need. When you feel the urge to buy something, think about it, whether it's a need or a want. If the item is a want, think about it. Why are you not content with what you have? Now, ask yourself, is it a need? This Wait a few days and see if the urge to buy it is dissipated, whether it's gone, that urge to buy. It has happened to me because I wanted a nice bag, leather bag. And uh, of course, I have so many bags there. <laughs> I, I was attracted to the bag. I was thinking, and because for me to get it from my children is very easy, but I don't want to give them that trouble asking for things. So I said, wait, I'll think about it and come back. I forgot about it, just forgot. That, because I was carrying all other bags and I said, oh, good. I saved also a little bit. That's how we, we end up buying unnecessary. So stop buying stuff you don't need. Now, third is, third tip, show people you appreciate them. Be pleasant. Offer kind words and action to help build up your emotional bank accounts. The more you put out in the world for others, the more you will receive in return. You know, this gave me so much of happiness when brother said, now y'all start off, take the platform and y'all give the teaching every day. I said, yeah, Lord, you're giving. You know, I, we bring out our self. Brother. Even, uh, we, we, wherever we have taken correction, we have brought that up. So this is how we have to appreciate people. I really appreciate brother for giving us this platform, giving us this opportunity. Now, the fourth tip is practice gratitude. Each day, identify at least one person, a pet, or thing that enriches your life. Write your thoughts down in a journal. When you find yourself unhappy, talk a moment to review your entries. Take a moment to review your entries and think about it, the good things in your life. You know, for me, uh, I see the snaps of my grandchildren and I feel good about it. This morning, my daughter just sent a small video of my grandson playing with, my, with his father. So I was so thrilled to see just the first time he started playing table tennis. And uh, so I said, send it to your father-in-law. He'll be so proud that his grandson son is becoming like him. There come the trumpet. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Identify at least one person, a pet or a thing to enrich ourselves. And let's make a journal and write all the good things so that every moment we go to our good, whatever we've enjoyed, we read it, we feel so happy. Uh, even Brother Maxwell put two beautiful hymns. I like that hymn. So I was singing with because I said I don't want to disturb others by Thing. This voice is different from the other, but I enjoy that bit of it. Now, the fifth tip is learn to enjoy simple things that don't cost money. Uh, meaning, it's meaningful conversation, walking in nature, reading a good book, spiritual or otherwise. These things are all free and can offer often more joy than more expensive endeavors. So, we go to say movie we go to mall we go here and that's just temporary it will not give us so much of uh, and we waste money we spend money here we just walk in nature enjoy the beauty of nature i look around sometimes i say lord thank you for this rain this heavy rains these days but it keeps me focused on many other things like you know if i had to if there was no rain i perhaps would have gone out and done a lot done some other work but you know this thing helps us a lot when we uh, look at learn to enjoy simple things which cost nothing. We have to enjoy things like 
watching nature, reading even a, your Bible. It's so much, it gives, gives me a lot of time to read my Bible these days, you know, because rains kept me indoor. That's one beautiful thing. God has given us this season, season of rain and sunshine and uh, winter and summer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Now, the sixth tip is live in the moment, don't postpone happiness. Too many people believe that their happiness is conditional upon some future events. Example, the next pay rise, the retirement, or the day to win the lottery. Don't wait. Don't wait. Find happiness now by living in the moment. Make others feel happy. You know, when you make others feel happy, I've noticed it, that we feel so much happy. Oh, God, thank you, Lord Jesus. You made that person feel happy. Just a call also, calling a person. I just called a person yesterday and because she had not come for mass two, three days. And then she said, you know, no, she's telling me, it's a rain. I said, okay, good enough. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I said, I hope, yeah. And now I get more time to read. I'm so happy. Like, and then she said, I'm happy you called me. And I was just thinking, you never thought of me. I said, no, not like that. I, I think of you, I like when I see you, I, we go around for a cup of tea and all, and we are always speaking the word of God. That's what we have learned to do when we go for a cup of tea. So she's saying, I miss your company and all. I said, no, we make, let the rain go, slow down a little. So that's also enjoying every moment, live the moment. Now, how do we nurture contentment? How do we nurture contentment? Here are some ways to cultivate contentment. This is another very important uh, to know how to train a mind to contentment. Attri attitude of gratitude. I just spoke how to practice gratitude and become so much easier. Gratitude, you know, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's, that's talking a material thing, but when you give your time, when you give now uh, a call, uh, just hello person, even a smile. Now there are laborers outside my house, they're, they're doing some work. And uh, I just smile at them, they feel so happy. I just, uh, I requested one time, you want some water? He said, yeah, you know, they, uh, I just think like they're just my own. They're, they're working just outside my, just they're, they're cleaning up all the grass. But you know, you feel so happy when you make others happy. Nurture optimism, that's very important. We sometimes say, don't be pessimist. It's negative, it's opposite of being optimist. So we have to, we all know ways to be positive, but it is very important to be optimistic. Be optimistic in every small thing, never negative. Oh, what will happen? No, that sentence is wrong, absolutely wrong. Many of them say, oh, what will happen? What will happen? God has done everything for us. He finished it. We have to just say thank you instead of saying, oh, what will happen? Avoid comparison. This is another very, it's very dangerous, especially among children. It's very dangerous to compare. It becomes a stronghold in them because I've uh, seen many youth in the retreats. They had this stronghold because of comparison. They feel the parents love one child and don't love the other child. Or somebody said something to them, the teacher or professor, whatever. So we have to be very, very careful to avoid the comparison or to call anybody with any other name, but by the blessed name, the baptism name or whatever. Be satisfied with what you have. This needs no explanation. As I said, what is contentment? Now serve others. This will give us untold contentment. You know, when serving others, this is a virtue of Jesus. When we see how he came to serve, not to be served. Who is a contented person? Who is a contented person? If you are contented, you are satisfied with your life or the situation you are in. Now, this. what are the benefits of contentment? Benefits is first, peace of mind. Contentment brings peace of mind and positivity that can facilitate growth and self-improvement. Now, so it is having a peace of mind. And second is happiness. Contentment promotes happiness. Third is strong relationship. You grow in relationship with like-minded people. You have to be very careful with whom you walk and talk because whether they build you up 
or they pull you down. So have a very strong relationship with per people who are in the world. Distinguish wants and need. Just spoke out with. And I said, what is wants and need? That is another benefit. Fifth is simplicity, mother of all virtue. So now what are the benefits? I'll repeat, peace of mind, happiness, strong relationship, distinguishing wants and need, simplicity. Now there are keys to contentment. Contentment is about accepting people and things as they are and not dwelling on how you wish things should be. It's about keeping a positive attitude when there are difficulties and not letting your unfulfilled expectation of a person or a situation cause you inner pain. So we have to be contented about everything, accepting people and things as they are. Why we say contentment is the greatest wealth? The greatest wealth that we can possess is contentment, not money. If you're contented, money will come following you. This means being content with when, wherever we are with our lives is more valuable than being wealthy. When we learn to cultivate this type of wealth, we will find that our lives go well no matter what. Now, this is a vital, very important vital uh, need. Why do we need contentment? Contentment is the most important attribute of virtues and the most fundamental of all virtues. Where there is contentment, the remaining divine virtue will be there themselves. Contentment is the cornerstone of happiness. Contentment is one of the most essential needs in today's competitive world. Now, can uh, I hope everybody understand what is a cornerstone. If the cornerstone is not there, the whole structure will come down. So just like that, the contentment is a cornerstone. The divine, the remaining divine virtue will be there for us. Now, let me tell you about myself. Now, everybody wants to know and hear, caring. Before I could be prepared on this topic, I was reflecting and thanking God for the many favors I and my children have received and we still receive. In any situation, things would fall in place. I would come across good and honest people. God made things so much easier and experienced contentment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Holy Spirit gave me this topic as I was preparing, I was relating myself. Yes, each one can look back and see where we stand. It gives me great joy to work for the benefit of God's kingdom. And now I am more than ever contented. Praise you, Jesus. And uh, I also have to rate myself where I, how much is it from zero to 10 or whatever percentage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Brother Max. Praise you. Praise you. Praise Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for this wonderful teaching today, my God. Yes, my God. We just can't understand, my Father, sometimes. And the enemy tries to put things in our mind, my God that we are not content. But today, my God, I thank you the sister has thrown and shown some light on it, my God. Let us all be satisfied with what we have, my God. Let us love one another, my God, and have that lack of understanding towards our brothers and sisters. Let us show humanity towards one another, my God. And above all, my God, let us be discipline our life with all these attributes, my God. My Father, yes, the world teaches us, my God, to do the stuff and to keep up with the Joneses, my God. But my God, show us, my God, open up our horizon 
that we may understand and appreciate the people around us, my God. Let us practice gratitude towards our loved ones, my God. And let us document every as good things that you have done in our life, my God, that that journal, my God, would be a written testimony, my God, for all the attributes, the gifts that what you have given us, my God. Let us have a meaningful conversation, my God, not something which is of flesh, my Father, to bring one another down and to belittle anyone, my God. Let us be more like you, my God. Let us live at the moment and enjoy the moment, my God. Let us learn to nurture our friends, our families, my God. Take that spirit of uncontainment from us, my God. We thank you, Father, that as we have learned the biggest wealth, the greatest wealth that we have today is contentment and it is your word, my God. Father, your word says, my Father, but your goodness with contentment is great gain. And I give you glory and honor, my God. I thank you for this platform. I thank you, Father, for blessing Sister Marcella with this beautiful teaching, my God. And I know for sure, my God, this teaching today, what has happened, it is meant for someone. It may be anyone around the world, but they would be touched and blessed with this beautiful teaching. I give you all the glory, my God, that all our participants who are there today have chosen to be here, my God, and enrich our life and to be content in the word of God, my Father. Because your word says, my Father, you will never leave us or you will never forsake us, my God. I give you glory and honor, my God. I close this prayer and I thank you, Lord, that all the transmission went off smoothly without any hindrance, my God, because your precious grace was upon this day today. I close this prayer, giving you the glory and honor in Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Amen.